Hey, welcome to Considine Creek, North Keppel Island. Mangroves are plants or plant communities between the sea and the land in areas inundated by tides, usually at the mean high water level. They can take form of trees, shrubs or palms. All share the ability to live in salt water, although they do not appear to need salt to thrive. Growing in a salty environment means that mangroves lack competition. Only a limited number of plants have adapted to intertidal conditions. Worldwide, there's about 65 recognised species of these mangrove plants, but 40 of them occur in Queensland. All right, Eric Jack here from North Keppel Island Environmental Education Centre. We're down at Considine Beach, and we're here doing a long plot assessment for a mangrove watch. And what that means is we are setting up a transect line that's 30 metres long. We've attached it to our first tree. Now, the way to measure this correctly, uh, we've gone along We've already done a few, but we're up to about the four meter mark. Now, we have someone who's recording the data and they need to, they have a job and their job is to tell me what I need to collect. And we've got a, a range of data here that we're collecting. So first thing we need is the distance along the plot okay, for this so particular mangrove. This is where we go along our transect line. We're measuring this tree here. I can see that it is four point three five meters along my transect line and, and how far off the transect line so is this is where checking? i get my one meter ruler put it away from the transect line that's about 67 centimeters yep okay. 67 centimeters and it's on the it's on the left hand side of our transect line yes it is and do we it's a an am which means it's a yeah. gray mangrove yeah, so this is a gray mangrove species and that's the code for the gray mangrove and what's the girth at the just above the base okay so the way to measure the girth to, to measure the girth correctly on a mangrove you get down to the bottom the base of the tree you wrap your tape around have a look where it meets oh sorry pick it up that was at the 41 centimeter mark so that's the girth of this tree mm. Okay, so what now we need an estimate of the height. Okay, so Eric, that's where we have a two meter pole, we put it at the base, comes to about here. We're going to call it four and a half meters. Yeah, four and a half meters. Now, a lot of this is estimating, but trying to estimate it as correctly as you can it doesn't have to be spot on. So, so yeah, okay, so has it got a canopy? It, it has, it has a canopy. Yeah, so, so we're going to say it's so emergent. Yes, it's an emerging tree. It's an emergent, and its health score, what's its health score? Yeah, so we give the health score from zero to five. So zero being the worst, it's dead, or five being really healthy. Looking at this tree here, there's a few dead twigs. But, I mean, however, there is a there is a gastropod living on it. So that we might put that down in observations, and we might give it a health score of four out of four. five. Yep, that's a good score. Because again. of those dead twigs. Yep. Thank and, you, Eric. Okay, so now you know the process of how to measure uh, what's in the mangrove system here. I'll hand you over to Bill now to have a discussion about the grey mangrove. These are the new metaphors of the marine specialist, really. This is the grey mangrove, and these new metaphors are essentially snorkels. The grey mangrove grows in a permanently wet mud or substrate. So it's got issues with um, getting oxygen, with respiration. So these are essentially snorkels that allow the plant to breathe even while it's inundated by seawater. If you look at the base of the grey mangrove, it looks pretty much like a standard um, tree. There's no uh, buttress roots or anything like that. It tends to have sort of grey flaky bark often with lichens growing on it if you if you come if we go and have a look at the leaves the leaves tend to have a gray underside and just while just pull one off if you have a look the leaves the leaves leave the stem opposite one another um, other mangrove species the leaves may leave the stem in an alternate fashion but with the grey mangrove they leave the stem opposite one another um, this particular mangrove has a an adaptation that allows it to store salt in its leaves that are no longer good for photosynthesis so 
a leaf can be filled with salt uh, it's no longer good for photosynthesis so the plant can drop it off and in that way it gets rid of excess salt here we have a mangrove long plot data sheet. The purpose of these long plots is to assess the number and type of mangroves and measure the height, diameter and spatial arrangements in the mangrove forest. So here we've recorded our date, our start time. Over here we've got the forest type. So it was mainly uh, grey mangroves that were in this area and it was in the arm of a creek. Uh, what have we got here? And there were no student collectors, only teachers got it. It was at Considine Beach. And we had to enter our start and finish GPS coordinates. Um, if you don't have a GPS, I use an app on my phone called Emergency Plus, and that will give you your longitude and latitude. There's other apps on smartphones that will give you that information. Plot length was 30 meters. And then, here's all the data that we've recorded. Uh, so you need to stop when you get to 50 trees. Now there's a bit of a checklist that you need to uh, tick off. Um, do you have up to 30 living trees? 25 of them should be canopy stems. Uh, record your total plot length, which we have. Take a photo every 5, five metres along the transect line, which we have. Uh, preferably equal left and right uh, trees on either side. Sometimes that's not possible. Uh, and make sure you record your end time and then you've sort of got to make some observations down this last column about uh, why do you think it might be uh, the damage if there's damage there and some likely causes and then once you have all this data it's uh, time to submit it into the mangrove watch database also in the mangrove area, which we did the long plot assessment, you need to take a photo every 5 metres. So that was 0 metres, 5 metres, 10 metres on the transect line, 15, 20, 25 and finally 30 metres. There's the end of our transect tape which we taped around some of the new metaphors. So here we are just off Considine Beach on the National Park track. Uh, here there's some signage for the yellow mangroves. Uh, they're quite dominant in this area. The scientific name is Cer Cereops tagal. The yellow mangroves are so called because of their yellow green leaves. This species is commonly found on firm, peaty, well-drained clays or clay mud or the sand clays of the upper tidal limit of the mangrove shore. It's very muddy through this section, as you can see here on the video. The base of the tree is buttressed. This is a distinguishing feature of the yellow mangroves. The leaves of the yellow are uh, yellow, green and dark green in these shaded areas. Leaves grow to 7 centimetres long and 4 centimetres wide. They're oval shaped with a notched tip and are slightly curled under the edges. They are arranged opposite one another in groups at the end of its branchlets. Their large, corky, bumpy postules aerate internal tissues. The leaves can be used for treating sores, quite interestingly. Flowering occurs between September and December, so not this time of the year. Flowers open in the late afternoon and are pollinated by night-flying insects such as moths. And they're certainly home to a lot of uh, mosquitoes and sandflies. But that's just a close up. And that is the yellow mangrove, a very common species here at North Keppel Island and also in the Considine Creek area. Okay, along the trunk of this mangrove, you can see the open lumps which are actually called lenticles okay now these lenticles help the mangrove tree to absorb oxygen from the air okay and uh, they are small enough to let the oxygen in but they do not let the salt water in the 
It's also worth mentioning that a lot of the mangroves in this area were damaged by Cyclone Marsha. Yeah, here February we are closer to the mouth of Considine Creek. And what we're looking at here is called a milky mangrove. Milky mangroves grow as shrubs or trees. They can grow up to 15 metres high. So this one's uh, actually quite large, probably about, oh, I reckon about eight, eight metres, five to eight metres, something like that. In Queensland, it is a mangrove of the upper tidal limits and they occur at the landward fringe of the community, often in association with the grey mangrove. So this, this uh, mangrove wouldn't end up underwater. It's always on the, on the fringe and you can see where that salt marsh grass is. This area rarely gets uh, you know, really covered underwater. The leaves are basically an oval shape with a pointed tip rounded at the base and often finely toothed at the edges and are attached alternately on the stems. So that would help identifying it if you are using a dichotomous key. The major feature of this mangrove is its milky sap. So if we pick a leaf off, the milky sap uh, comes out of the plant when branches or leaves are broken off. This sap is actually poisonous and can cause severe skin irritations with temporary blindness if contact is made with the eyes. So you can see that little bit of white sap that immediately comes off it when you pull it off. This is a good way to identify what mangrove it is that you're looking at. But that is our milky mangrove species. Also sometimes referred to as the blind your eye mangrove, okay, because if you get that sap in your eye, okay, it will blind you in the eye. So indigenous people also use this mangrove when they were fishing, okay, they would get the sap and put in the water and it would stun the fish and uh, they also used it on saws and stuff like that. This is the red mangrove, scientific name Rhizophora stylosa. This is a common mangrove in the mainland but not at North Keppel Island. This mangrove has distinct prop roots which support the main trunk and assist with gas exchange. Red mangroves can grow up to 5 metres. The trunk is usually upright and is covered by rough reddish brown bark. The prop roots support the main trunk and contain numerous lenticles, air pores, on their surfaces. Leaves are oval shaped and leathery. They are dark green with numerous reddish brown dots on the lower surface and a small pointed tip. Small creamy white flowers occur in branching pairs while the leaves are arranged in opposite pairs on the stem. This is called the club mangrove. Scientific name Aegialitis annulata. This mangrove is a small shrub that generally does not exceed 1.5 metres in height. The trunk is thick at the base but quickly narrows to give the appearance of a club. This mangrove is not very common in the system but can be found in a variety of habitats including rocky beach environments and the seaweed zone. The leathery leaves specialise glands which excrete salt from the upper surface. The leaves also differ from other mangroves as they are stem sheathing. This means that the leaf stem actually flattens out and curls around the stem where it is attached. The club mangrove flowers between September and December. Its flowers are small, tubular and white. The fruit which are small, smooth and banana shaped are ready between January and March. Another mangrove in the Considine Creek area is the black mangrove, scientific name Luminitsera racemosa. This mangrove can grow up to 5 metres long. The bark of the black mangrove is very dark, hence its name. Black mangroves are often found on the landward edge of mangrove areas, where inundation only occurs in the highest king tides. The leaf is the best way to identify this mangrove. Each leaf has an indentation at its tip which forms a heart shape. If you look carefully you can see a small gland at the base of the indentation. This mangrove has small white flowers. It groups between October and May. It has a small fruit. In the National Park area there's also some really great signs that give more information about the mangroves present in the Considine area. But just a quick recap in the section that we looked at, we have the red mangrove, milky mangrove, 